Hi there, everybody. I've got uh, some requests on how to use the Node MCU workspace. So I'm going to take you through a little demo here, a little tutorial on how to use it. So first thing you do is you, uh, you come load it. And there's all sorts of fun stuff going on in this workspace. But if you're a newbie, you are going to uh, come here and see this Your Servers tab. And the first thing you're going to want to do is download the serial port JSON server. Now you want 1.8.8. So if you have had a previous version, this is probably going to be new for you because it was only released um, you know, a week or two ago. So I'm downloading that. I'm going to extract it. And you've got to extract it. Uh, well, you don't really have to extract it. You could run it from there, but best to just extract it. Throw it somewhere on your desktop. And then open it up here. We have to allow access to the firewall on Windows 10. Sorry, these this font size is so large. I don't know why it opens with such a large font. Now, it says there's no serial ports to list. So the, uh, the first thing I want to do is actually plug in my Node MCU device. However, before I do that, I'm going to connect to my my host, which is localhost, because I'm just running it. Notice it says no serial ports. Okay, so now we go over to our Node MCU device. You'll notice I have a few of them. Uh, I actually have a couple different models. The one that is is the most popular is this one. Uh, it fits on a breadboard breadboard nicely. Um, so let's start with that. It also comes preloaded with Lua. However, the version that it comes with. Um, the firmware I don't like, so you're going to want to reflash it to the version that I will show you. So it shows up, make sure you're using Node MCU buffer, and 9600 baud is the default for Lua. Connect there, and then I'll hit reset on the chip itself, and notice when you do, you get um, a nice listing there. And then you can kind of hit some of these quickie buttons that I uh, that are in here just for convenience. Uh, file system info, notice we've got about 3.4 meg available on this guy. And then uh, what's really cool is you can click refresh to list files and it will show you your files. And then in fact you can open it up into the editor. Uh, what I'll do is, I'll, let's say I just remove this comment, you can then also um, you can save locally, so you can hit Control S to save, or you could just hit save. And what it does is, in this list, it will show you that um, it's available locally, but you can also then re-upload it. So notice it's actually doing the file dot write line conversion for you. And then when I hit refresh, that 585 bytes should change, and it did 576 bytes. So there you go. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, let's go and actually get another device connected, though. Excuse me. So, um, we will now do this other device. It's pretty cool. It comes as two pieces. You can disconnect it. And the bottom is actually the USB driver. Um, the top is the ESP8266. And you can separate this after you program it. But it's really convenient to get it on there. To program so that you've got the serial port control. So I plug it in, and by default, it has a, a really cool little uh, RGB LED on it, and it, do, it it does run a program. It sort of seems to fade the colors in and out. Um, but you'll find that here, let's close this. I'm not sure why that's showing like that. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh this list and notice it looks different. It's that CH340 uh, USB to serial chip. And if you try to connect, you will find that it doesn't quite work. So I'll actually hit reset. Okay, so I reset it. And I do get some stuff in here. Um, so what I have realized is that this, I believe, is at 115,200. And now we'll reset it. And we get this, um, 
this alternate version of um, the firmware. So you could work with it from here, uh, but I don't believe it's got Lua. So what I want to do now is show you how to re um, flash the firmware on this so that it's running Lua. So there's some convenient stuff in here uh, where it shows um, you where you can go build your own version of the firmware. And I have been using this, and I think it's great. But I've got some versions here, especially this full one. Just go ahead and download that for now. Comes in pretty quick. And then you also are going to need the uh, Node MCU flasher. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab this. I'll make a new folder called um, ESP Flasher Node MCU and I'll paste that file in. Now I will also go get the node flasher. This is a Windows app. Oh, I didn't actually mean to. I should open that in a new tab, but either way, we'll go get the uh, exe. It's on GitHub, so you got to do a couple extra links there to get it to download. And I will go show that in folder. Oh, it's still downloading. Jump the gun. Uh, there we go show in folder and I will get that over into this as well okay so let's run flasher it's just this um, kind of gooey app that somebody wrote run anyway it's safe guys uh, and then the config so go here and grab that file that was loaded and then you gotta change that X and then make the offset be zero the offset, I believe, is just where it starts writing in memory. It should pick up COM13. You want to also make sure... i got to go back to the workspace. But you want to make sure that you're not connected to the serial port anymore, um, so that you're not locking it. And we were connected, so I just disconnected. Okay, now let's go ahead and flash. So you notice that it immediately sort of picks up that it's getting flashed. You can see the standard blue, light blue blinking LED on um, the ESP device as it's getting programmed. Uh, it runs pretty quick. Um, let's let that go. It's interesting that the RGB LED actually is still kind of running during this process, but let's get that closer. Um, that's always uh, pretty safe to see that blue LED. Uh, for the amount of times I've programmed firmware on these, it's always a nice feeling. Okay, well that's running. Um, I want to show you also in the docs tab. This is pretty darn handy. I almost always open the docs into a new window. These docs are pretty good lately. They were updated a couple weeks ago and uh, I'm finding them to be highly useful. Okay, how are we doing on the programming? Uh, almost there. Once it's done looks good. Close that. You can come back over here and hit refresh uh, and then keep in mind that the binary that I have available is always 9600 baud. I think they're just slowing it down um, just to be on the safe side. I almost kind of want to get a version that runs at 115,200. So I'll connect and then you don't really see anything in the serial port console and you should. You can always try to just do that but it's not really going to work. You got to forcibly reset it here with the button. Okay. And we are golden. We have our correct initialization. In fact, the Node MCU buffer is sort of looking for some of this language to know that things have loaded. So it's um, this is really the only firmware I've tested it with. Let's go ahead and just send some commands like chip ID or heap things are looking good. That black check marks is pretty important to get. And then I have a file for the, this is the witty device, where it should um, do some fun stuff in terms of toggling. And I think I even have a fade. So I have an off green, off blue, fade in red. So I should just be able to now run this interactively. Notice the buffer over here queues up and it slowly feeds in. Oh, I just accidentally disconnected. 
Okay, wait, reconnect. It looks like I'm safe. And then notice we've got the, um, the fade in red working on this thing. Um, so that worked pretty well. Now I think if I look at this, I can now say this just does timer alarm. So I should be able to do timer dot stop zero and it should turn off. Let's see, timer alarm is on channel zero. Oh, you know what? It's not taking my command. So whenever it doesn't take your command, like you see things sort of um, getting clogged over here, this should always be at a zero. You really do just have to reset. And uh, it's not ideal. I think there could be some better ways to to tweak this buffer so it's a little robust because I don't think it's it's not the Node MCU device. The buffer just isn't always in sync. It, it is actually, to be fair, a little bit of the Node MCU device because the buffer looks for these little arrow responses. Um, so let's uh, that, that's pretty much the demo for this guy, and then we'll try this last little device, which is called the Wemos, and the Wemos. Yep. So the Wemos device, let me see if I can get that to stay. Um, just a little bit of a different layout. On this one, they have the USB to serial chip on the back. So let's, uh, let's see how that's going to work. So now that that's connected, I'll refresh the serial port list and we will try to connect. Uh, I will reset it. Now that I'm connected, a little cute little reset button on the side, and sure enough, I have uh, stuff going on it. I had that actually working. Um, I flashed that earlier, so I'm not going to show you in this video how to flash it. But let's see if there's any files on that one, because that list uh, file list is pretty cool. Uh, again, and then like if you open that, that's led.lua. And I believe, so for instance, on this one, um, yeah, LED.lua is already on there. So what I'm going to do is I have a test LED, and I'm going to just toggle every one second. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to hit Control Return, and then notice the blue LED toggles every one second. So um, let me also then turn that off. So notice that's running on timer one. So I should just be able to say timer dot stop one. And it stopped. It stayed on blue. Um, so it kind of goes to show that you can run interactive commands. Now I think if I, for instance, wanted to just print hello, yeah, it's clogged again. So just hit reset. I tend to reset a lot. But just to give you an idea, on this interactive, you can do sort of one-offs and you can hit the up arrow to get your previous commands or they're available here. But you can also just run stuff from here by either saying run or we... Oh, I'm going to have to do that timer stop again. Did it take it? Now see the fact that the arrow's green means it didn't... Um, the buffer, the Searport JSON server didn't get back any safe signal it needs to it expects one of these back to know that the um, the command got processed so it's a little odd how it's a little odd how the um, node MCU works that it doesn't like give you the arrow right there on the timer dot stop one so could be ways to kind of work around it anyway just reset when in doubt um, I want to just show you this idea though still of how you upload files. So let's say I make a new file, right? And I just call it print hello world. And um, notice that, you know, this actually is pretty intuitive in terms of knowing the Lua. This is the Ace editor. It knows Lua code. Um, uh, hello again. Um, and then, you know, even like indenting is pretty smart. Um, if you do shift, and then of course you can just say control enter, 
and notice it, it runs it down there. You can also say upload. And if you're going to upload, it actually is going to be called unnamed1. Um, so if I refresh the file list, I'll have an unnamed1, and it compiled it. Um, so that's pretty cool. You could, you're supposed to also be able to delete these. Make sure that worked. Yep. Um, if I want to save this local, though, I hit Control S, and it doesn't like it being called unnamed, so I'll just call it Hello World. Hit Enter, and now when I upload, it uploads it as Hello World. Um, so that's compiling, and then I should be able to refresh. I see Hello World now, and then um, you can also just run the file. So now it's just doing it as a do file. So that's um, that gives you a lot of cool ways of doing stuff. And so what I tend to do then are make sort of modules like this LED module. You upload that, and then you can kind of run stuff. So you kind of do this quasi as you're developing. You create your modules. You once you're happy with them, you upload them, and then you work on other files. You know, you kind of make make a new file where you're you're sort of um, building each thing interactively but referring to sort of debug modules so hopefully that um, gets you going here um, enjoy uh, love some more feedback and of course you can always fork this workspace on your own um, on github if you want to modify it and do other stuff so thanks for tuning in